Hello everyone, I'm Takashi. Today I will talk about adaptively secure constraint to the random functions in the standard model. This is a joint work with Alex, Shuichi, Yo, and Shota. To the random function, PLF is a fundamental primitive in cryptography. PLF is a key function that is indistinguishable from a random function if a distinguisher is only given oracle access to the function. As a classical result, it is known that there is a construction of PLF based on any one-way function. Recently, uh, there was a proposed extension of PLF called constraint PLF or CPLF. In CPLF, uh, given the key K and the constraint C that defines a certain predicate, we can generate a constraint key denoted by K sub C. By using the constraint key, we can evaluate the PLF on any input X that satisfies the predicate. That is, as correctness, we require that for any input x such that c of x is equal to 1, we can use this constraint key to evaluate the PLF value. On the other hand, as security, we require that for any input x such that c of x equal to 0, PLF value is looks so random even if we are given the constraint key k sub c. More formally, uh, for defining the security of CPLF, we consider the following security game. In the security game, adversary can make the following three types of queries. The first is the key query. Uh, in the key query, adversary submit our predicate C, and then the challenger returns a constraint key corresponding to this predicate. The second is evaluation query. In this evaluation query, adversary submit some input x and then the challenger returns the PLF value on this input x. The third type is challenge query. Uh, for uh, the challenge query, adversary submit some input x star that must satisfy a certain condition to prevent trivia attacks. And then the challenger picks a coin from uniformly from 0 or 1. And if coin is equal to 1, challenger returns the PLF value on the challenge input x star, and otherwise it returns a uniform string y uh, in the range of the PRF. And other but the goal is to guess which is the case, and it outputs its guess coin prime. We say that other but win the game if coin prime is equal to coin, and uh, we say that the CPRF is secure if for any other but three, uh, the probability of correctly guessing is almost one half. Uh, in more detail, uh, there were several flavors of definition of the security of CPLF. And in particular, in this work, we consider the following two axes of strength level of security of CPLF. The first is selective security versus adaptive security. In the adaptive security, other bots can make its queries in arbitrary order. On the other hand, in the secu selective security, the order is uh, restricted in a certain way, so of course the adaptive security is stronger than the selective security. And uh, as a second, uh, we also consider single key security versus Q collision resistance. In the Q collision resistance, uh, other bots we can make at most Q key queries. On the other hand, in the single key security, other bots we can query only one key query. And of course, if Q is larger than 1, Q collision resistance is stronger than single key security. So ideally, the optimal notion, security notion of CPLF is adaptive and Q collision resistance for any polynomial Q. Uh, here I would like to review non-constructions of CPLF. And I would like to uh, divide non-construction into the following two categories. Uh, the first category is construction from standard assumption. Uh, there are a lot of constructions in this category. However, all constructions only achieve selective security, and most of them only achieve single key security. So we would like to ask one question for this category. Our question is, 
can we construct adaptive secure and collision resistant CPRF for any functionality from standard assumption? So this is our first question. And uh, the second category is construction from obfuscation. Uh, by using obfuscation, Bonnie and Tandri uh, showed that we can construct selectively poly collision resistant CPRF for P slash poly. However, this only satisfies selective security. And interestingly, though uh, obfuscation is a very strong primitive, it turns out very difficult to construct adaptively secure CPRF uh, even using obfuscation. And in, in 2015, Hohenberger et al. constructed adaptively secure uh, CPRF for puncturing functionality. However, so puncturing is a very limited functionality, so this is not sufficient. And uh, recently, in 2019, Atropaden et improved that result to construct adaptively and single key secure CPRF for NC1 uh, from obfuscation. However, this is not scale sufficient because uh, single key secure, it only satisfies single key security and the function class is limited to NC1. So our question for this category is, can we construct adaptively secure and collision resistant CPRF for P slash poly, uh, which is a class of all polynomial size circuit. And here I would like to remark that we omit construction reliant complexity leveraging or random oracle, and uh, we focus on construction in the standard model uh, from polynomial hardness assumption. So in this work, we construct new three new construction of adaptively secure CPRF. The first construction is adaptively secure and order word collision resistant CPRF for the class of TCNF for any constant T from one way function. Here, TCNF is a predicate that is expressed as an end of many clauses that each of which uh, depend on at most T input bits. And especially, this class includes bit fixing functionality because bit fixing is exactly one CNF. Second, uh, our second construction is adaptively single key secure CPLF for inner product functionality from LWE. And our third construction is adaptively secure and order one collision resistant CPLF for P slash poly from indistinguishability of fabrication and LWE. And here I note that the first two construction also satisfy weak one key privacy, which roughly says that uh, the constraint key doesn't reveal the uh, constraint that is associated with the key. So from now, I would like to explain each construction in more detail. So our first construction is adaptively order one collision resistant CPRF for T, C, and F for any constant T from one function. As a historical note, in the first version of our work, we constructed adaptively order one collision resistant CPRF for a smaller class of bit fiction. And after that, Tabari observed that we can trade the collision resistance and the functionality to achieve single key secure security for TCNF. And in the current version of our work, we take the both advantages, that is, our scheme, our CPRF is order one collision resistant, and at the same time, uh, we that supports the TCNF functionality. And as uh, and I also note that in the concurrent work of PyCard and Chiehien, they also gave a similar construction to ours, but they only proved selective and single key security. Our construction is based on a combinatorial construction from normal PRF. And for simplicity, we focus on the special case of bit fiction uh, in this talk. So this is a construction of adaptively single key secure CPRF for bit fiction. Uh, here, a bit fiction predicate is described by a string V that consists of zero, one, or asterisk. That means the wild card. For input X, uh, we see that x satisfies the predicate v uh, if vi equals xi or vi 
is wide card for all i. Then the key of our CPLF consists of two L keys of the underlying normal, normal PLF. And the CPLF on input x is de defined to be x or of L evaluation of the underlying normal PLF using a key that is chosen according to each bit of x. Then for a predicate, bit fixing predicate v, a constant key k sub v is said to be a subset of these keys uh, according, chosen according to the predicate v. For example, if l equal to 5 and v equal 0, 1, asterisk, 0, asterisk, then k v is, looks like this. And for example, if we want to evaluate on 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, then that is possible because 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, so the corresponding key is contained in k sub v. On the other hand, if we want to evaluate uh, on 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then k to 0 is missing. So we cannot evaluate that using this k sub v. And similarly, in general, uh, we can prove that this construction satisfies the security if adversary only obtains at most one key. However, unfortunately, uh, it is easy to see that this construction can be completely broken by using the two key queries. So we have to modify the construction to achieve collusion resistance. For achieving the Q collusion resistance, our idea is to associate each normal PRF key uh, with Q input bits instead of one, uh, like this. And overall structure of the CPLF is similar to the single key secure case. So that is XOR of uh, a variation of the underlying normal PLF using key that is chosen according to, uh, according to each bit of X. And I will not explain the detail of the security proof, but uh, by some simple combinatorial uh, argument, we can indeed prove that this is Q collusion resistant. And as for efficiency, uh, because the number of uh, the each CPF key consists of two L to the Q normal PF keys, so for keeping this to be polynomial in the security parameter, we have to set Q to be a constant. And that's why the, this construction is only limited to order one collision resistance. Next, I'll move on to the second construction. Our second construction is adaptably single key secure CPRF for inner product from L level E. Our inner product predicate is specified by integer vector y, and for integer vector x, uh, x satisfies the predicate specified by y if the inner product between x and y is zero over the integer. Our construction is divided into the following two steps. In the first step, uh, we construct a selectively secure CPRF for inner products uh, based on existing construction of key homomorphic normal PRF. I note that a concurrent work of Picard and Xiexian also gave a similar construction for this selectively secure construction. Uh, as a second step, we modify the selectively secure construction to achieve the adaptive security by using a technique taken from lossy mode of LWE and the partitioning technique inspired by a recent work of Libert et al. So our starting point is a lattice-based key homomorphic PRF uh, by Banerjee and Picard. In the construction, there is a public matrix denoted by A, and the secret key of the PRF is a vector S. Then, uh, for evaluating the PRF on input X, uh, we first compute a certain matrix A sub X that is associated with input X from A uh, by using uh, BGG plus 14 homomorphic evaluation technique. And this, the detail of this part is irrelevant for the purpose of this talk, so I would like to skip this part. And then after generating the matrix A sub X, uh, the PR, PRF value on input X is said to be uh, S transpose A sub X uh, rounded module P. So here I would like to explain 
uh, how to modify the BP14 construction to obtain selectively secure CPRF for inner product. So the difference from the BP14 construction is that the secret key is said to be a matrix instead of a vector, and the input of the PRF is an integer vector instead of a bit string. And uh, we use Sx as a, so Sx plays the role of the secret key in the BP14 construction. And this is the construction of our, the selectively secure CPRF. And for generating a constraint key for predicate y, uh, we first uniformly choose a random vector d, and then we set the constraint key k sub y to be s plus d tensor y. And by using this constraint key uh, for evaluating the PRF, uh, we just use k sub y instead of the secret key k like this. And then the, by definition of k sub y, we can write this like this. And uh, if the inner product between x and y is equal to zero, then this additional time disappears, and so this is equal to the original PRF value. On the other hand, if the inner product is not equal to zero, then this additional term remains, and so this can be written like this. And here we notice that this term is actually the PRF value of BP14. If we see d as a secret key of the BP14, so this means that this value is the original PRF value shifted by some another PRF value. This means that this, uh, this value computationally hides the original PRF value, and that's why we cannot use this constraint key to evaluate the uh, PRF uh, on input x such that inner product is not equal to zero. And this intuition can be turned into a formal proof in the select selective setting. However, unfortunately, uh, we cannot prove uh, the adaptive security in this way, so we have to use additional ideas to achieve adaptive security. For achieving the adaptive security, uh, we will rely on the technique often referred to as a lossy mode of LWE. The LWE assumption says that our LWE tuple uh, of the form A, D transpose A plus noise is computationally indistinguishable from uniform. And in this context, uh, we consider two modes for the public matrix A. The first mode is the injective mode. Uh, in the injective mode, the LWE tuple information theoretically determines the secret vector D. On the other hand, uh, in the lossy mode, the LW tuple uh, leaks almost no information about the secret vector D. And interestingly, uh, it is known that we can generate matrix in the injective mode or a lossy mode in such a way that uh, they are computationally indistinguishable. Uh, extending these notions, uh, recent work of Libert et al. introduced a technique or which we call sometimes injective mode in the following sense. Uh, they gave a way to generate the public matrix A so that the following three conditions are satisfied. First, A is pseudo-random assuming LWE. Second, a matrix A sub X can be efficiently computed from A and X. And third, uh, for any x1 to xq and x star for any polynomial q, the probability that a sub xi is lossy for all i and a sub x star is injective is 1 over poly. So in this condition, we consider q plus 1 matrices and the first q matrices are lossy, but only one matrix is injective, and that's why we call this technique sometimes injective mode. This is our construction of adaptively secure CPRF. This construction is very similar to the selectively secure construction, except for the differences that we take a randomness extractor at the left of the evaluation 
and also we define the matrix A sub X so that we can set this matrix to be in the sometimes injecting mode in the security proof by using the technique of Libert et al. Then I will explain the proof sketch of the adaptive security. So first, we implicitly set S to be S hat minus D tensor Y by using a uniform matrix S hat. Here I note that this S is a master secret key of the CPRF and so this is not given to the other battery. So the reduction algorithm doesn't need to explicitly compute this S and what the reduction algorithm actually does is to just pick a uniform matrix S hat. And then by using this S hat, uh, the constraint key K sub Y is easy to simulate because this D tensor Y is cancelled. So the constraint key K sub Y is just equal to S hat. Uh, let X1 to XQ be the evaluation queries and X3 be the challenge query. Uh, then uh, if we set A sub X to be in the sometimes injected mode, then the probability that A sub X sub I is lossy for all I and A sub X star is injective is uh, 1 over poly. Uh, then uh, the PR values on this evaluation query and the challenge query can be written like this. Here, uh, because we assume that the A sub X sub I is lossy, so this means that this term uh, leaks almost no information about D. So even if we are given all these PR values, uh, D still has a lot of entropy. On the other hand, uh, because we assume that A sub X star is in the injective mode, so because D has a lot of mean entropy, uh, this term also has a lot of mean entropy. Therefore, by using the property of the randomness extractor, uh, we can conclude that the PF value on the challenge input extra is pseudo-random, and this completes the security proof. And what is important in this security proof is that after switching the public matrix to the sometimes injective mode, the rest of the argument is completely information theoretical, and this is why this proof works in the adaptive setting. Our third construction is adaptively secure and all around collision resistant CPRF for P slash poly from indistinguishability of fabrication and LWE. And our construction is basically obtained by obfuscating a primitive called shift hiding shiftable function uh, that is constructed based on LWE by Picard and Xiehian. So our construction looks like this. And unfortunately, I don't have enough time to explain the detail of the construction and the security proof, but our main idea is to embed previous key queries into pre-challenge key queries. And this idea is uh, very different from the previous work of Bon and Chandri, uh, who constructed selectively secure CPRF from obfuscation uh, because they embed the challenge into all key queries. Finally, I would like to introduce several applications of our constructions. After uploading the initial draft of our, our paper, uh, Tabale used our first construction to construct uh, adaptively secure ABE for TC and F. And actually, she gave a generic conversion from adaptively secure CPRF to adaptively secure ABE. Uh, with, uh, if we assume certain property for the underlying CPRF. Unfortunately, her conversion is not directly applicable to our second CPRF because that doesn't satisfy the condition. In a recent work of ours, we generalized tabularly the framework to be applicable to our second CPRF. And as a result, uh, we obtain adaptively secure IPE from LWE uh, which has been open for almost a decade. This is our summary slide. Thank you for your attention.